Now with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. President Biden reacting to the Supreme Court ruling with a strong language condemning the court for taking away a long-standing constitutional right, saying he'll do everything in his power to protect women's rights across the country, but calling on Americans to do their part at the polls. Good evening. The state of Alabama went to court after the decision came down and as of an hour ago just got all injunctions lifted on the state's 2019 abortion law. This was certainly expected. This morning the petition was filed and this afternoon a federal judge held a conference call and that was indeed the result. ABC 3340's Aaron Wise joins us right now. Aaron, you've been on top of this all day. Where does the attorney general's filing stand now that the federal judge has lifted it? Well, it's like you said, that injunction has been lifted. That order coming down before for this afternoon, that 2019 bill is now law in Alabama. You'll recall the law bans abortions from the moment a fertilized egg implants in a woman's uterus. The exception, a woman may only get an abortion if her life is in danger. That applies to some who are suicidal, but only after rigorous testing is done. Now, that motion being filed and granted, clinics have already stopped procedures. Abortion is no longer legal in Alabama. The West Alabama Women's Center in Tuscaloosa no longer provides abortion care. The reversal of Roe v. Wade making a 1950s law enforceable again. We are in the process of contacting about 100 patients who all have abortion appointments next week. The Alabama Attorney General filing a motion to remove an injunction on the Human Life Protection Act of 2019. It makes it really the strongest abortion law in the nation. It prohibits abortion at any stage of the pregnancy. Eric Johnston drafted the law making all forms of abortion a Class A felony for the abortion provider. The only exception, if a mother's life is in danger, pregnancy from rape or incest, not included. We are saying in our law that an unborn child is a person within the meaning of the Constitution. How do you explain that in this uh, situation of one conceived by rape or incest, that's not a person? That is inconsistent in the argument itself. That injunction removed hours after the motion was filed. We think it's a crystal clear decision for the court. You know, the underlying basis for the injunction was uh, the Supreme Court precedent in both Roe and Casey. Robin Marty with the Women's Center says for their clinic, the law disproportionately impacts low-income black women, some working multiple jobs. The idea of them now either having to find even more time to leave the state or to travel across a number of states, or otherwise they have to simply remain pregnant and give birth to a child that they were not prepared to continue to have and did not want to continue to carry. That's what we're facing right now. Now, Alabama's 1950 law made it a misdemeanor for providers to perform an abortion. The 2019 law ups that charge to a felony. And so, Aaron, it is clear now that abortions in the state of Alabama are illegal. And in fact, there were only three abortion clinics still operating, one in Huntsville, another in Tuscaloosa, and one in Montgomery. But let's talk about the possibility of premeditation. For example, could a woman in Alabama be charged with any kind of a crime if that individual were to have an abortion in another state? Well, Pam, I asked Attorney General Steve Marshall that very question. He tells me there are no repercussions for Alabama women who have an abortion in a state where it is legal. Aaron Wise reporting.